Hello again from the Recasting Presidential History Conference here at the Miller Center at the University of Virginia. And I'm here speaking with William Hitchcock, who is a professor of history here at the University of Virginia. And uh, Professor Hitchcock, you've just written a biography of uh, President Eisenhower. Uh, and in your remarks uh, today, you you spoke about the, uh, the Ike Renaissance. Uh, we have a number of books coming out, uh, or that have come out in the past several months. Uh, you mentioned uh, Gene Smith in your um, in your talk. Is this because Eisenhower is remembered as a moderate conservative by modern pundits and historians? I think probably it's partly coincidental, which is um, there hadn't really been a very good, complete biography of uh, of Eisenhower for a long time. And it was it was a great opportunity because he's such an influential president in a in a in a in a decade of the 1950s that's full of interesting people, interesting crises, interesting problems, both international and domestic. And it was time that he had a good, solid treatment. Gene Edward Smith has written a, a wonderful book, uh, 900 pages long. Um, there's three or four others that have all come out in about the same, roughly the same time. And once that they've come out, now that they're out. We're beginning to reflect upon Eisenhower again uh, with a new uh, sense of, uh, of, of rediscovery. And there, I think, the lessons that many of the reviewers and the people who are reading it are drawing is, gosh, Eisenhower was better than we thought. He's more moderate uh, than the Republican Party certainly is today. He was a budget hawk. Um, he kept us out of war. He, uh, he understood power, but he was very restrained in using it. And these are lessons that people are drawing from a lot of this new Eisenhower scholarship. Okay. My own personal view is that all of those things are somewhat overstated, that those are essentially the sort of standard stories about Eisenhower we've heard before, we will hear again. I wonder if they're all quite so neat and tidy. I think Eisenhower is actually more conservative than, um, than he, he, he would like to admit. Um, I don't think he was actually that much of a budget hawk. He did balance the budget uh, three times, but he spent an enormous sum on defense spending. Um, and uh, there were times when he was restrained. There were times when he was not in, in, in his uh, pursuit of foreign relations, uh, foreign affairs. Um, but he's a, he's a, I think the danger is to turn him into yet another kind of cardboard hero. He's a, actually much more interesting and at times inconsistent than some of the new work suggests. And one of the findings, uh, one of the arguments that you made in your presentation is that Eisenhower, you know, you're you're a European historian, and you have a, a background in a history of ideology in Europe, and you argued that Ike really was a man driven by his own sense of ideology, what you described as the American system. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit about that? Right. So my one of my theses is that is that Eisenhower did develop over time a, a, an ideological argument about America's place in the world and about what America should do and how it should, how it should behave at home. And I use the term the American system to describe this kind of um, diverse set of statements and, and views. And the American system on the home front, I think, starts with Eisenhower's belief that the individual is what government should, sh should, should protect. Government should protect the individual from government. That's his central uh, sort of I ideal on the home front, that the state is essentially has an inherent propensity to expand and to take over the lives of individuals and to create institutions and to spend money, and that it, it, the goal of good government is to try to limit the growth of government so that the individual can flourish, so that he or she can pursue his or her individual talents in a voluntaristic way in which the government stands back. So that's a very conservative argument that's actually still current today. So in that sense, Eisenhower does appeal, I think, to, uh, to many contemporary Americans who are making the argument from the right that government's too big. Uh, in foreign affairs, though, Despite his talk of restraint, he also believed that the American system was, was threatened. And it was threatened by communism, it was threatened by Soviet Union, it was threatened by the geopolitical uh, challenge of, 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 of communism on the world stage. So the American system had to defend itself by accumulating power, allies, nuclear deterrent, um, and by generating the global economy. So he wanted, in a sense, to expand American power in the world in the service of creating a small and limited government at home. That's very contradictory. And I think that's kind of interesting. So how do you reconcile, and uh, Bruce Shulman brought this up during the Q&A, reconcile statements, uh, you mentioned one that Eisenhower made on the campaign trail, uh, declaring, and I'm paraphrasing here, that uh, Social Security, Americans who want security should go to prison. Uh, but whereas Bruce Shulman, 
mentioned uh, that Eisenhower, in a letter to, uh, in a private letter, said, well, you know, people like Robert Taft, who want to roll back the New Deal, are, quote, stupid. So where does the real Eisenhower lie? The real Eisenhower is a very difficult man to nail down. That's the point of my uh, presentation. There are many Eisenhowers. That's probably true of a lot of presidents, a lot of powerful leaders. Um, but yeah, he, um, he did not go after Social Security. You're right. Although, you know, and he said, in fact, he enhanced it in his, in his uh, 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 presidency. But at the same time, he publicly declared that the, the desire of the individual American citizen to get handouts from the government was a kind of betrayal. A betrayal of American individual rights and liberties, and the and the the the, uh, the gift that, uh, in his view, the American system gave to every American citizen, which was the ability to shape your own destiny and not to take handouts from anybody else. So what he said in that quotation was, "If all you want is security, you can go to prison and just get a free meal and a roof over your head. You'll be fine." But nobody wants prison. So he was he was essentially associating the the welfare state and the safety net with a kind of imprisonment in a government. Um, government system, that's pretty. That's pretty hard to reconcile with uh, the other image that he wanted to portray, which was as a man who was right in the center of the road. Which is the real Eisenhower? Um, the interesting thing is the historians really we don't have to choose because they were both real and they're both there in the archives. They're both there in his speeches. He's a he's a he's a, at times quite contradictory.